This is the story of Marie-Anne Lajemodier, the first white woman to settle in the Canadian West. History records that she came to Fort Edmonton in 1808, when the vast Western territory was still part of the fur trading empire of the Hudson's Bay Company. In the West, voyageurs and fur traders lived with Indian and half-breed women. In the East, in what was then Lower Canada, marriages were often arranged. Just a minute. Miss Gal. McPherson just rode in from down river with the mail. There's a letter for you sent along from Quebec. A letter for me? Mm-hmm. How can that be? It's there, my friend. dead. I have to go. I'll tell them to hold the boat for you.
cousin is going. No. Listen, Tantu, you knew he would go. They always go. She can't run the farm anymore. She is your responsibility. <laughs> it's God's way for us. Was that father coming in? Yes. Well, go ask for your pay. He forgets, you know. He doesn't forget, but he pays me when I go home. Come on, that's a long time, and he forgets. Ask him to pay by the week. It's better for us, and he'll remember then. He remembers, Mama. There's another thing, Jean-Baptiste. It's time to marry. Marry? <laughs> Please, Father, one thing at a time, eh? I'm serious. Your mother can't work as in the past. And you can't run a farm without a wife. I suppose you're right, Father. I suppose you're right. Did you ask him? I don't need to, Mama. Well, I hope you told him it's your birthday. What does that matter? He, he might just give you a little something more. No, I didn't tell him. Tell him. Come oh, yeah. Tell him now. Well, ma. I presume you picked somebody out for me already, Father? Hmm. Well, I can make recommendations. Yes, Father? Oh, uh, bring Monsieur Lagendier a cake, will you? No, 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 thank you, Father. What uh, recommendations? Well, there's Durand's daughter, Colette. Eighteen, a good figure of a girl. And uh, Jeannette Caron, the clerk's daughter. Uh, uh, you'll see for yourself tonight at the Avis Ball. Huh? Is there something, my girl? Is Monsieur sure he wouldn't like a cake? Uh, no, no, no. I, I must go. Well, to the good work, my son. Did you do? Well, did you? Good luck, my son. Thank you for your help, Father. It's a pleasure with you. No, Mama, I did not tell him. Oh, foolish girl. Tell him. All right, I'll tell him. Father? Father? Yes? It's my birthday. Oh, that's nice. Father, I'm 25 years old. Is that so terrible? Yes, not even you would recommend me. There's not one woman in this whole town my age who hasn't been long married with children and a place to belong. And me, I'm an old maid. I belong only as a servant, as your servant, as my mother's servant. Oh, my dear. It's just that you, you're helping your mother to raise your brothers and sister. Oh, Mary Van God, and now it's my birthday. Uh, <laughs> Child, don't. 
look at me. Why didn't you tell me? What's your problem, Priest Farr? I'm sorry, Father, I'm just being stupid. No, you're not being stupid. I've been praying, Father. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that God is telling me if your life is not right, you have to do something to change it. Well, it seems to me that is exactly the kind of advice he might give. Well, what can I do? How can one change one's whole life? Uh, first of all, go home. What? Get ready. <laughs> Put on a pretty dress. What for? You're going to the ball with me. Well, I don't have a dress. These are my clothes. Hmm. Wait. You get a dress. Your wedding dress, Mama. What? The one you kept in that chest all these years. My precious dress. Now it's gonna do some good.
last seven years, but I still remember you. I remember you. Really? As if it was this afternoon. Oh, your son is so handsome. It was all very nice, but I'm glad it's over. <sighs> These bones. <sighs> oh, welcome to La Jumadière farm, my dear. Thank you, madame. I'll get supper in a minute. Just let me rest a bit. No, no, mother. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, do I? What would you like? What do you have? Oh, um, some fresh lamb cuts. From Monsieur Lamache de Butcher? Naturally. It's all perfect. What do you say? My best. You did come home. Naturally, Mother. Let's hurry up with the dinner. Eh? Hello. Hello. Do you see him? He's just like his father. It's that time of year, you know. It's in their blood. He went away before and he'll... He will again.
I was uh, thinking about the West. And uh, I was thinking about the sky. And about uh, lace curtains. And uh, three months in that house. And uh, now I'm thinking about the West. You're unhappy here. If you're unhappy here, I'm unhappy here. Baptiste, you want to go back there? So I'm going with you. You're going with me. You realize what you're saying? There's never been a white woman west of the Saskatchewan. So I'll be the first. You'll be the first, just like that. Do you realize what it's like to go into that country? It's impossible, Marianne. It would be too hard for you. Only half-breeds and Indian women can stand that life. And if we go, we may never come back to this. Do you understand that? You still want to come? Well then, I suppose you'd better start packing and we'll go. going to get to Fort Edmonton? Well, if we're lucky, we'll get there next summer. Not to stop for the winter, and if we start early enough in the spring, we'll, we'll get there before the summer is over. It's uh, over 2,000 miles. Where are we going to spend the winter? We should stop in the Red River country. It's the best place. There's some Indians there. We could stay with them. You know them? Mm-hmm. The Assiniboines.
Hey, dog, you came back to us. It's in the blood, eh? Take my advice, my friend. Never go outside. It's not for real people. <laughs> Louise! Sweetheart, oh, my beauty! Beauty, beauty, beauty! Did you wait for me? Of course, Baptiste. Of course, lover. Hey, John, you didn't marry her yet? Don't rush me. Oh, yeah. Slow folk. Come and meet my wife. Wife? Hello, Mrs. Dakar. Well, Baptiste, do I assume that you're back on the payroll? Well, you know me, Mr. Bird, ready any time. When do I go to Rocky Mountain House? Sooner than you think. Who's this? Marianne. Madame Lagimadière, my wife. Marianne, I'd like you to meet my good friend John Rowan, the slowpoke. There he is. <laughs> Louise Impreville, who's a little too shy for her own good. Madame. And uh, finally, the great man himself, our chief officer, Monsieur Bird. Monsieur Bird. You're French? Yes. Never been a white woman here before. Do you have any idea what you're doing? May I? Yes. My name is I. Come on, then. It's all right. He needs me. Come on. I'm hungry. That's many horses. He's a Cree. A chief. He's looking at me. Madame. Don't. Never seen a white woman before. And so I do it. Snow flower. Snow flower. My old place, the best one. I hope you like it, madame. Thank you, I'm sure. The nicest in the married quarter. Home, Sherry. our own little Métis. Hey, John. Her papa is a very important official in the company. And you lived here before? Yes. Baptiste is an important man, too. He has uh, privileges. We spent the winter with the Asiniboan. The Indians were very good to us, I mm -hmm. One of them was my midwife. Thank you. Well, madam, I trust you find our primitive quarters adequate? Mr. Bird, I spent the winter in the teepee. My child was born there. I assure you, this is paradise. I see. Well, at any rate, you won't have to endure it much longer. Batiste, I want a word with you. Mr. Bird, one thing. Well? If you propose to make any difficulty for my husband because he brought me here, you should know he had no choice in the matter. I knew he would come, and he couldn't possibly get rid of me. Then I'm disappointed in him. He's no man for this country. Monsieur, he is this country. And this civilized lady, Batiste. What is she? Just one minute. One minute, Mr. Bird. I'll tell you what she is. She's a lady, that's what she is. Exactly. And you should know better. 
It's always that opening wedge that ruins the fur trade. What are you talking about? How can this little woman ruin the fur trade? You don't know. You're not the man I thought you were. When settlers appear, the fur trade disappears. You bring a white wife on here. And not only that, with a, with, with a child, for God's sake, you're turning us into a settlement, and I won't have it. Madam, there are two tons of trade goods to be moved to Rocky Mountain House. Do you know where that is? Yes, in the Shining Mountains. In the Rocky Mountains. And do you intend to accompany your husband there? Of course. Oh, then he's not going. You'll not be re-engaged at all, Baptiste. You'll take this woman back to Canada with the first brigade when they leave. That's all. One moment. Just a minute, Baptiste. Monsieur Bird! I'm talking to you! Why, you little... Baptiste! What? Hey, calm down! I'll take his head off, that little... Sure, sure, wonderful. You know he's right. You are stupid. Well, let me be stupid, then. Calm down. Let me talk to him. You know what he's like. Yeah. He's just a balance sheet on two legs. Yes. Well, what about her? I give her six weeks. Baptiste does not have a wife very long. Huh? I'll take that bet. Before you decided to marry him? Oh, it was a long time. It was um, anywhere between five hours and five minutes. It was arranged. Arranged? I was recommended. I... Where you come from? Would I be happy there? I don't think so. There's tea there when the kettle boils. And if you need anything. Thank you. Louise? Are you going to marry Mr. Roy? If he returned to Canada, he would desert me. That's what they do. We'll see you at the Regal. What's the Regal? The Voyager's homecoming. This isn't a shop. It's an empire. You should worry about the Americans on the Columbia. You should worry about the Pacific Fur Company. But settlers? <laughs> there aren't going to be any settlers here for another 50 years. What are you talking about, my friend? I've got two settlers in there right now. Hmm? Don't worry, my friend. I won't kill him unless I have to. At least, you throw a gal tonight, huh? You bring your wife. Everyone wants a dance. You can try, Delacroix, you can try. <laughs> but he's, hmm? Don't let them fight over it. Bird wouldn't like it. What was that? It's the regal. It's just the evening. that first day, Baptiste, when you talked about the Shining Mountains? Are they really that beautiful? What's the difference? We're not going there anyway. It's 
Indian. They're curious. Why would you be all the time? It's because you're white. They've never seen a white woman before. Come to look after Rand. You trust them? You trusted the Assiniboines, didn't you? They are half white, Marianne. Come on, I bet 
artist? Now wait until you hear my new assignment, then it's your turn to be a little green. You rock him out of the house? Yeah, not until it's official. You'll find it. You're talking to a very important man. Or whatever. You know where you are going, have that taste. Sure, she's leaving. Well, it stands to reason. A frail young white lady. How will she endure the life? A delicate creature. Well, that's not what I heard. I'll take that. Show us your money. Tell him, uh, 
I've gone home. I worry about him. Children, you can go now. Do you know who it was? How should I know who it was? She tried to kill me! Marianne, did you see who it was? It was a woman, that's all I know. Are you sure? It was an Indian girl. Betsy, do you have any idea who it might be? Go to bed now. I'm not tired. You're leading the expedition tomorrow morning. What? Dr. Bird told me. I will never understand that man. Can you be ready? I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? I just got roof over my head and it was raining. It's only three weeks. Did you let Tantu in here last night? What? Who did you say? You know what I mean. Tantu. Ah, oh, Your Honor. How would I remember? One girl or another. She comes. She goes. To visit her cousin. I see. You were full authority. 
represent the company west of Fort Edmund. And the goods list. And who knows? In a year or two, we may send you to the Pacific. Thank you. I was thinking it would be Delacroix. He's going another way. Come on, Baptiste. We'll walk you down. Look after my wife. And tell Dan too not to try anything foolish. If she goes anywhere near Marianne again, she'll have to answer to me. You have my word on it. See you in three weeks. Change your mind after all. Goodbye. There's one thing I didn't say. When you come back with the first, it will be goodbye. I'll leave with the brigade. I have no choice. Only you have a choice. I think I know what that would be. It was wrong. I should have let you go. You've been very good to me. Outdated. You'll see some big changes. I suppose so. I was thinking maybe an Indian girl could help me with my housekeeping. Why not? Would you know a girl named Tan too? No, madam. wife and children for looking after my hands so much. Well, I was thinking maybe you would know of an Indian girl who's used to the life in the fort. Well, yes, there are some. Hmm? What would you think of Tantu? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she'd be good. She was uh, raised, well, partly raised by Louise Umperville's family, and, uh, and then she spent some time here, yes. So she'd be good with Heine, then? Oh, yes. She has a child of her own. Do you know where I could find her? No, madame, you can't. Uh, she's gone back with her own people now. Excuse me, please. Excuse Lovely, Marianne. It's my grandmother's recipe. Really? And it was her grandmother's recipe. It comes from France. Lucky for us. We stand to your cousin. Yes. Did she live with Betsy? In that apartment? Oh, Marianne. I... Did she have his child? That's all over with now. You don't have to worry about that. I don't think it's all over. She must wish me dead. But I don't blame her. I just have to try harder.
Hurry on. Well, I will anyway. You're lonely. Not at all. Oh, yes, you are. And you're hurt. Where should I be? It was before my time. You never meant to leave her. You should never have come home. What is it? What is it? He'd come to train himself, the great man. Oh, you should see, Your Honor. What are you talking about? What great man? The chief. Any horses? The very words. his horses. The money, the currency. Go and get the beaver currency. We welcome our good friend. Tell him the white chief welcomes our brother. And tell him we'll give him a good price for his famous horses. Where's the damn currency? There's more horses down there. Must be more than 30. 30? 60. Tell him to give him 60 made beavers. 90. And I'm going to give him 60 made More currency. More country, get more. How much does he want? <laughs> we can have a cavalry brigade, huh? <laughs> how much? How much? Tamaigo. Tamaigo. How much? 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 How no flower. The white lady, snow flower. And he wants the white lady. Madame Lajemoudier? <laughs> you tell him he's out of his goddamn mind. <coughs> We're gonna stay. No, 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 no. Wait, be quiet. Let me think. I think it's something. Rowan? Tell him the truth. She's not for sale. Oh, for God's sake. I don't want to offend you. Tell him she's not for sale, will you? Wait to get a dog, eh? Squirrel. Dog and shut them on the meal. They'll give you ten horses for snowflake. No. More. Beast and all the meal. Twenty horses. No, not for a thousand horses. Be discreet. Tell him the truth, or this will happen again. Tell him! 
Moj je ta ovdje okijamat, ki čem ta tam ta noh. after all. Monsieur, is it so serious? Serious? It could be a disaster. You, madam, you are a disaster. How serious is it? Tell me. Well, He's the war chief. He could feel the crack cavalry of 2000. It's not war. No. another offer for you. The horses and two of his children. His children? Aye. Naturally, we declined. He's insulted. We've insulted the whole Cree nation. It's worse than that. It's politics. What is politics? He's lost face with his people. He has to come for you. We'll sit tight. You, madam, keep out of sight. in, madam, and stay in.
Think she can do. Will you shut that goddamn gate? Yes, sir. I'm going after her. You stay right where you are. Oh my god. Any show of force and we're dead. But we have gotta do something. Yes, nothing. That cheat's on a tightrope. You don't think he's gonna care about us, do you? Sports. Say this, please. You have done me a great honor. I can understand a chief can sell his daughter. That is his right. But I cannot be sold. It is not my fault, and it's not the fault of the people in the fort. My God tells me I'm married to one man. And I'm married for life. Great spirit talks to him.
Ma. Ei tapahdu. Ei tanssia. Ei tauta. Ei vitsine jäänu. Ei vitsine minu taisini. Tos minä ei vitsine tuon keskustelun tehneet. What is he saying? You are now a member of the tribe. You are now the chief's daughter. be back. The chief has adopted me. Can't send me away now, Factor. I'm an Indian.
Marie Ann and Jean Baptiste lived happily in Fort Edmonton for some years, then moved to the Red River country in what is now the Canadian province of Manitoba. There, Jean Baptiste achieved great fame as a buffalo hunter. And there, after raising a large family, Marie Ann lived to the ripe old age of 95, long enough to see the rise to prominence of her famous grandson, the Canadian revolutionary Louis Riel.